Hey there, this is Jonathan, and in the following tutorial we're going to take a look at using the Ken Burns effect to create image slideshows. Now you've seen these image slideshows all over the place. If you see them on YouTube, you see them on websites, uh, DVDs, all sorts of things. But we're going to be creating um, this with some software, um, which I think you'll find pretty easy to use. Now the Ken Burns effect was developed by a guy named Ken Burns, and he was creating documentaries. And uh, one of the documentaries that he did, which was really um, popular, was the one on Civil War. Well, if you look at you know, the footage that he could get, he could really only get images. So he developed a technique of panning and zooming into these images and then using them as the film instead of actually shooting real film. So this is called the Ken Burns effect. Now, typically you have just like a single image and you zoom in once or zoom out a little bit, but you can also use the technique for an image where you zoom to different parts of it, like they're doing right now. And you can see he's, he's focusing on different characters in this larger picture. So one of the things that you need to be aware of is that you need images that are pretty high resolution and pretty, you know, pretty big in order to do this effect really well. And you also want to find out what is the interesting part of the image that you want to zoom into. Now, one of the things I do want to point out is that this particular sample here looks fine because we can't really tell where the edge is. But on the next one, I want you to keep track of where the mouse is right now. That's the edge of the photo, and then it gets to that edge and then stops. Or it's the edge of the video, rather. And what we don't want is to be able to typically see the edge of the video because then we're exposing it as not as the image being smaller. So we're going to typically find that wide images are better for using this effect than um, narrow images or tall images. So anyway, um, when it comes to software, there's a bazillion different pieces of software that you can do this effect with. Um, I just did a quick search on the internet and I found like 30 pieces of software. Things like Magic Photo Story, and it does all sorts of stuff and it'll create slideshows and put them on DVDs and all that kind of stuff, which is really great. Pro Show Gold and Pro Show Producer is really great. Um, I've actually used it a number of times and, and find it's pretty, pretty good software. They even have an online um, instant version of it, which is kind of cool, but somewhat limited. Uh, Roxio has some software that you can use, which looks like you can, do, you can create DVDs and all sorts of stuff. Uh, Slide Roll is an online version of it, and you can see the results are pretty good. You just click on one of the slideshows they have there and you'll see that you have some sort of title slide maybe or maybe a graphic they've created and then occasionally they might pan and zoom into an image looks like they don't have too many here so let's go back to uh, back to the home page see if we can find one that has some zooming in there so there you go we've got the pan and zoom effect so that's that Ken Burns effect now, this software doesn't give me a whole lot of control, but it's still pretty cool. Now, another one, Aquasoft, looks like it's pretty neat, and, and you can even go straight to YouTube from that. Um, and here's uh, the Pro Show Web one. Here's what it can do. You can include audio with it, too. And then if you want to, you can, I think, download it, but you have to pay a little bit to do that. Now, the software I'm going to be looking at and showing you how to use is actually made by this company called NCH. And NCH has put out a whole bunch of digital media software and other types of tools, which I think are really great, clever pieces of software. I will, however, um, disclaim a little bit, and that is that they try and have you um, download other pieces of their software all the time when you're installing their software and, and when you're using different tools within the software. They try and get you to download the video converter software when you're trying to output a video or things like that. So just be aware that it, it kind of acts a little almost like a virus at times where it wants to pop up boxes and load new software but um, it's kind of the way that this product or series of products is is built 
that you can on demand download the other pieces that you need. So they have some great software like their WavePad audio editor is actually quite good and their you know video converter is quite good as well. Now they have a slideshow software called PhotoStage which is decent but um, I've actually used it and I made a tutorial with it just a few minutes ago and and then I started playing around with some of their other software and that's actually their video editor and I kind of discovered that it has even more capabilities from my perspective about what it can do than the slideshow um, software and that's because what I like about this is that it acts a little bit more like a real video editor than a slideshow creation tool so if you want go look at the other photo stage tutorial that I made earlier today um, it's called photo stage 2 and you can um, take a look um, if not, let's go on with the video pad video editor version of this. So um, what we're going to do first is anytime we're going to be working on a video like this, we need to start to gather our assets. So I've just randomly gone to a hiking trails search in Google Images. And one of the things that I want to do is limit my images to larger images. Now, do be aware that I'm going to be downloading images from, from these sites, and I don't really have rights to use them in any type of commercial project or anything like that, because this is, um, since I'm an educator, and hopefully you guys are doing this to, to learn these things, you're protected by what's called educational fair use. But if you really want to find um, ones that are better and that you have access to you might want to go to Flickr and do hiking here and if we do a search we can go to advanced search and go down to ones that are created um, with Com Creative Commons licensed so what that means now is that I can use these um, for projects some of them you cannot use for commercial projects but often you can use these projects and now you would be able to see this says that you can't make money with it but you're allowed to use it so that's the way that this particular image is protected under um, uh, Creative Commons anyway I'm gonna use some of these images because I think they'll work just fine for this video now I'm going to go to the the full image and then save this image and I'm gonna put it into my project folder so it's very important first that we make a project folder and then also create a folder for your footage. You want to make sure that you always organize your footage before you import it into your project. So I'm going to save that and then I'll go back and find another image. That one's kind of nice. I'll go to the full scale image. These are pretty high resolution as well. So I'll save that image as the autumn stroll let's see that one's kinda nice that one's kinda nice there's a lot of great images here that one's really large so let's go with the one here and see if it's the same thing that's beautiful so I'll use that as well and uh, maybe one more right there So that's given me a fair amount of images. So I'm going to go and look at the folder that I've created. And there's my footage folder. Those are the images that I've imported. And you can see it tells me the, the pixel dimensions of them. And they're all really quite large. So I have plenty of resolution for what I'm going to be doing. Now, the other file that I have here is the audio that I'm going to be using. Now what I like about this audio is that it's got a very distinct beginning and then it starts getting into the program. So it'll work well for this project. Now once I have gotten all of the images that I want to use, then I need to start also thinking about maybe making some sort of screen like an introduction screen. So I'm just going to go to some free software real quick. This is online software to actually make a simple screen. So I'm going to go to create a new image. Uh, actually, I'm going to open an image from my computer. And you can see I created one in the previous tutorial I made earlier today. 
and I'm going to go to that Ken Burns fit video and find the footage folder. Now I have to decide what image is going to make a really nice title. And um, I kind of like this sunset hike, but I don't like that, you know, it's got this stuff on the sides, but I'm going to, you know, use the opportunity to learn how to crop the image and use the parts of it I want. So I like the fact that this software, even though it's an online editor, really gives me a lot of the capabilities of something like Photoshop, but for free. Now it's not the only one out there. Um, there's another one that I like that's really good as well, but I just happen to remember Pixlr. So um, there I'm going, going to just use the crop tool and crop out a section, just double click, and there you go. I got rid of that stuff. Now I could also find out what the image size is and make it a little bit smaller. I know that this is really kind of large. So I'm going to make it about 800 by 600 and I'm close enough that I'm actually going to cheat a little bit and stretch it. Maybe not the smartest thing to do, but at least I am keeping that 4 by 3 ratio of 800 by 600 right now. Now I'm going, going to add a little bit more to it. Um, one of the things I'm going to add, because I think it's really nice in the software, is a layer that allows me to do maybe a little banner up here. And I like the gradients they have. There's one here that's really nice, that kind of blue one. It's really quite nice. So there you go. I've got a little banner up there, which is nice. And I can even change the opacity of this, which is really quite cool. So you can see I can take that opacity down so I can see the clouds through it just a little bit. Now I can add some text. How about I spell hiking correct? Hiking the Appalachian Trail is what I'm going to write. But I'm going to first, let's see, find if, if there's another song, uh, type of uh, font I like better. Hiking, and I need to make that white maybe. Hiking the looks pretty decent. There you go, I'll make that smaller. And I'm going to do one more text. Appalachian Trail. That one will also be... Actually, I might even go for a different color just because I can. Look at that, I can make kind of a yellow, or I can grab a color from here, which is kind of nice. It's not perfect, but it's kind of nice to get a little color in there. And I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. Now I can move it around. But you can see I can kind of make a really nice little graphic in here. So this software, even though it's free, Pixlr Online, through an editor, um, you can do a lot. In fact, I can now save this image. So I'm going to save this image, and I can save it as a number of different things. One of the things I love is being able to save it as a layered Pixlr file, because what that means is that I could come back and edit this file later. So I'm going to save that not in my footage file, but outside of it. Now, the reason that um, I save that is just because if anything happens, if I were to quit, I could now open up this um, PXD file, which is the layered file, and continue to work with all these layers. So it's really, really flexible. Now, what I'm going to do is actually um, turn off some of these layers here, and I'm going to save out different parts. So the very first part I'm going to save is just a JPEG, and I'll take it all the way to 100% quality for right now. I could probably knock it down a little bit. It probably wouldn't matter. I'll hit OK, and I'm going to save this in the um, in the same folder. And I'm going to call it title-sunsighthike1. And then I'm going to turn on the next part. And I'm going to do save title sunset hike 2 And then I'm going to turn on that text. And save it as my third one. Now the reason that I've saved all three of these is because now I have the ability to actually sequence between the three of these and create the look of a title. It's going to be really cool. Alright, so 
I've now got all of my footage um, created. The one that I don't really need anymore is that sunset hike because I'm going to be using that as my my title. I don't really need it at the end. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete it for right now. That way I don't have any extra files that I have to deal with. Now we have to download and install the, the software. So you can just click on it and it will actually download the software for you. So if I download that software and go to install it, I think I already have it installed, but I might as well go through it again. I accept, and here's where I was saying it tries to make you add other things so I don't turn on the Bing stuff. The wave pad is pretty darn good though, and the multi-track editing software mix pad is pretty good as well. So it's not to say it's bad software, but you know maybe you don't want all of that stuff installed. So let's take a look. Here is the video pad software that I've just installed, and I'm ready to get going. So the first thing we want to do is add some media files. So let me go back to the folder where I've been saving my work. Go to footage and start importing. I can really import all of that. Now the very first thing that we're going to do is pull over our sound and add it to it. So here's our soundtrack. And you can see if we go and play it, It doesn't want to play the video for me right now, since I don't have any pictures in here. It doesn't want to play it, but you can see I've got something there. So let's start with the basics. I've got my three title graphics. So I'm going to put those next to each other and just see what happens. Now I can play that. Okay, well, I really want my first image to start here. So I've got some choices. Number one, I could move back my audio a little bit because maybe, maybe fading in from black before I get into the images would be a good idea. So I love that you can just move that back. Now I can also adjust the levels of the, the length of these just by dragging them back a little bit. So what I love about this software is the ease that I can time things out just by clicking on the edges and dragging them back. So if we look at this, now I know that I'm going to fade in. And then have that other stuff come in. Right now it's not working a little bit, not exactly the way I want. I'm going to have that extend out a little bit longer because I do need the text to be longer than the others. All right, so let's see what we can do to add some transitions. All I have to do is click on that little um, icon right there on the edge of each one, and I'll do a crossfade. And I'll do a one second crossfade. Click on that one. Oh, crossfade one second. There we go. So now you can see the titles coming in. And then when I'm ready to go to the next image, I can just, let's see, that one's kind of nice just to go to it. I can go right to it and you'll see it snaps right in. Just exactly when I want it to go in. Now, in order to apply um, some other things, like one of the things might be nice that that I could maybe have a black solid to begin with. And they actually have it up here. You can do a beginning. You can do an insert a blank slide at the beginning. And I'll do it at the beginning of the timeline. And I'll just do a nice little quick black slide. That way I can adjust that back just a little bit. There we go. I'm going to make that really short. Just like I'm going to make this one shorter. So I need to get that timing back to its original thing. But now I can do a quick transition between that. So transitions, crossfade, real quick. So you'll see that it fades in from black. And I can always adjust that if I want to make it, oh, there you go. I think that's going to work. So now it fades in a little bit more there. Let me get that back. Let me adjust this length just to where it starts. There we go. So I've adjusted a little black at the beginning. That way it fades in. And this, this software really does quite well for this. 
All right, now, with this image, I want to apply um, the Ken Burns effect. Now, you can easily just click on that and make it, you know, longer with the duration, or you can click and drag on it. It's a little bit harder when you have multiple images because you have to click on it, then you can click and drag on the, the time. But anyway, going back to this one, I want to do the Ken Burns effect. So I go over to Effects, I find the one called Zoom, and I click on it. Now, one of the things that we want to do is make sure that we're keeping the right size. I'm going to keep the 4 by 3 ratio so that as I zoom, um, or if I change this, you'll see that it always gives me a 4 by 3 box. Now I'm going to have that kind of just slowly zoom in. So you'll see what happens is slowly zooming out. Now you'll see that that next image just ends right there. That's the next kind of um, point in the audio where we have a very distinct thing. So let me go to the next image and I'll insert it there. And I'm going to have it extend out to that. So on this image, I'm going to do an, an effect where it zooms out. So instead, I'm going to go to the end point and have that, whoops, 4 by 3. Let's click on that 4 by 3. So now you'll see it's the opposite. This one's zooming in, that one's zooming, actually zooming out, and that one is zooming in. There we go. Let's start that first point so it's right in the center. So really easy to work with, extremely easy software, and of course um, we would just continue with any other images that we had. Um, of course we can do transitions within them. This is only a 30 second um, piece that I have here right now, so of course this is not doing any major um, uh, video that we're creating in this tutorial, but there are some other effects that you might try out really the no transition or uh, crossfade, fade through white, these are really more common. Um, it, anytime that you create something that is very distinct, like I'm going to do that one with the fade to white, it actually kind of breaks between one section and another, like a transition. You'll notice right now it's actually trying to go um, 16 by 9 on me, so it could be that the um, size of this comp by default is 16 by 9, which I was not really aware of, but eh, we'll let it slide for right now. Could be that we have to uh, go and make sure that we use the effects of 16 by 9 on all of them anytime that we want to use these. So that would be kind of a problem if you had created all of your graphics already and you made them like 800 by 600. So we'd have to maybe like zoom, click on 16 by 9, and let it stay at that particular point. If we were to go to each individual one, click on zoom, click on 16 by 9, hopefully they would all appear in the same spot. Zoom, 16 by 9. Yeah, you see they're all kind of appearing in the same spot, which is good. but it's definitely not ideal to do this after you've done a bunch of work like I'm doing right now. I'm just trying to fix some errors and it's just because I haven't used the software before that I'm making these errors. So let's see, auto zoom we will do uh, left to right, zoom in, zoom out, so that's basically the same thing as a zoom but um, it does it automatically and I don't think that's a really good choice. You really should do it yourself. So this one will just move just down slightly. And that one, of course, we'll do a zoom. Choose 16 by 9. And if we don't move them, then it actually just becomes a static image. So that gives us a really good program at this point. Just something very simple. We'd probably do a graphic at the end and maybe some credits. But we've got ourselves a nice little project here. We've got a transition in right there in the middle. 
that obviously goes to something new. Otherwise, we can just, just do crossfades in between the, the different sections, or nothing at all. So now I'm ready. I'm going to go ahead and save my project because we never did save our project. So this is going to be saved in the same folder that I saved all my other work. So this is my sample video. And I am ready to actually save my movie. Now if I go on, click on preview, it will show me a real-time preview of it, which is nice, but be aware that this is going to be low quality. Now you should be able to see you should be able to see this on screen as well. We're almost to the end. And that's it. That's the end of our program. Now, it's very important to edit your audio and everything first, um, in my opinion, because by editing your audio first, you really know how long you're dealing with and you know the pace that you're going to edit with. And so that's one of the reasons I really like this software again, because, you know, it gives you that capability quite well. Now we're ready to save our movie. Um, by the way, we should have gone to options at the beginning just to see what we've got going on. Um, I've never really used the software, so there's kind of an interesting thing. The default still image duration, 3 seconds. Default transition, um, 0.5 seconds. I'd probably go with a 1 second um, type of thing. But otherwise, everything looks pretty normal there. Now, anyway, in Save Movie, um, here's some of the different options we have. We can save a DVD disk which is kind of cool. We can save it as um, an AVI or other types of video formats, WMV. We've got a lot of different presets we can work with. Some of them which are 4x3, 640 by 480 Some that are even high def, 1280x720. That's pretty cool. This one, 854 by 480 That's a YouTube high quality file for 16x9. Um, um, and then we can go to MPEG-4, and we can go to QuickTime Movie. Um, then we could even go to presets like portal, portable devices. And these are presets for like iPods and PSPs. And you'll see that you can choose the different ones there. There's an image sequence, which is kind of interesting. You could even upload it straight into YouTube, Facebook, or Flickr. And that's kind of cool. You can do a stereoscopic 3D. Who knew that? Anyway, I'm going to go to the computer data file because I'm going to use kind of a custom thing. I'm going to use the YouTube high quality, which is 854, and I'm going to choose MPEG-4 as my format. Now that means I'm going to get 854 by 480, and it's using um, right now 29.97, which is kind of a TV thing. I'm going to switch that to 30 frames a second. Now in the encoder options, I've got some different things. Now this H.264 is a very common video format, and that's very, very common on uh, YouTube. That's what they typically use. So I think everything looks great here, and I'm just going to leave it as it is. Um, I just wanted to go through and customize things. Now I do want to customize where I save this, so let me save it as my sunset hike. Sunset Hike, and that will be the name of my video file, plus I need to add the .mp4, and we'll hit Save, and we'll let it render. Now this is going to create the movie for me. Now if you watch the video on, um, what is that other slideshow, Photo Stage, you'll find that um, the software is very similar to this, but it works a little bit differently. Um, and I'm really impressed with the quality of this software by itself. I'm I'm really think it's a great simple video editor and it's also quite effective at creating image slideshows like this. So I hope you have a chance to try it out. Um, we're almost there. It says that it will it's 48% done. 
Um, so when uh, you actually look at the high quality results that this software can do, you'll be amazed. But I can't play it for you because I can't record um, video playing through a video player. So I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think and I'll see you soon in another tutorial. Thanks.